thought you would come to my defense. Clearly, you didn't. No, no. I, I, I think, I think um, <laughs> Clockwork is a little hard to, to use right now. Uh, I will agree with that. But I, I really feel that DC uh, completely outdrafted NP. Uh, in, in my opinion, I don't think... Like, I will always take the team that has... Like, they, they are able to control their own fate. NP could not do that, right? Because they had they had the uh, Naga Siren Invoker and an Omni Knight. You literally have like no no way to actually contest team fights besides Song of Siren Disruptor, right? That's the only combination they had to be able to to stop mm -hmm. like and draw out more time. So in my opinion, I think NP just I I think they literally lost because of the community bans because there was no there <laughs> was no good fault. operators for them to be able to take <laughs> you, you so well fools, done community you viewers you community out there this is all because of you this you, is on you the community the community MP. killed anime they did they, they did and I, i'm well sure done. some people are saying thank god but me no not me yeah. cap uh do you still have the login info to check out this draft buddy i just remember yeah yeah, yeah i'm watching okay. it right now sweet in oh no well here it is we talked about it last game where's the banana mancer been and dc will scoop it up first pick here in game two uh bands we've got terra blade and nyx assassin coming out from dc and np ban out Earthshaker rubik things starting to get interesting here mock why remaining. why is there a jakiro <laughs> i don't know i have no idea <laughs> I, I mean i don't i mean i know they they like uh. that here but like why would it be first picks is the question Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm really puzzled by this. Uh, I mean, it, it's not that Jakiro isn't a bad hero. It's just like when I see so many offlaners banned away and so many cores that uh, I personally would value quite highly. Remaining. Like for example, Spirit Breaker. Uh, I think Spirit Breaker is a nice, you know, opening Five pick for remaining. that's still available in the pool that doesn't reveal anything and is still a really valuable hero. Jakiro is not that time. hero I jump to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, He's, I mean, he's he like does a lot. He's not he's not a terrible hero, but it's just like oh, in the priority list. I wouldn't is. place him up there. Well, before that, I was gonna say this could be the the Suns fan strategy. It's uh, not long, no longer game one. You've got the, not your pick of the litter. It's time to go for pushing heroes. You just take the push strat win. Well, I mean both so far so good. Have one pushing hero. So. I know. Well, excuse me. Centaur is a big pushing hero, bro. Yeah, is he? Especially yeah. after yeah. that change with Mantis style. Return well, is still sick, like, Mott. That's just stand like super there. late game. You know. Return, return is still pretty it good. Is, so. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's it's good. Um, but it doesn't synergize with Jakiro because the, the, ta the tower attacks slower. Oh, so God. Centaur's <laughs> return will be slower to take the hasn't played himself. this out at all. <laughs> 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 the, the, the theory crafting shin is Counter really on another synergy. level right now. Unacceptable. You would think a team with two coaches synergy. would be able to pick up on these mechanics. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Curtis was asking me for advice on Centaur the other day, so it's not looking good for <laughs> oh, MP right Oh, now. God. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Uh, all right. Their Listen, team's really in dire MP. straits. No, man. I, I, know, I know who I'm betting on 16th place at the major. <laughs> Shannon was, like, one of the top freaking Centaurs back when Centaur yeah, actually he had. He was, like, like top was 500 for two right, days To be fair, no, I was top six, but that's that's when nobody had played the hero. Oh, that's because it was. Time. I don't think it was even in CM the, yet because of the new Because there were seven players playing Centaur? I knew there was a caveat. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well. I, I was trying to I was trying to amp you up, Shannon, but clearly you're. No, I I'm I'm a humble person. I don't know if you've yes. seen my team video that yes. came out a year when ago. When I see <laughs> when I think of Suns fan, I think modesty and humbleness. That's exactly what I think. Of. That, I I feel like I am modest and humble, but it doesn't come off that way. I'm just so giving you our time. Yeah, yeah, that video didn't help, buddy. I don't know what <laughs> whose whose idea was that again? Was that yours or was that somebody else's? No, it was my idea. <laughs> Suns fans, next adventure. No, in in theory, I'm still correct. I stand by, I mean, it didn't go off well, obviously, but... From the team that brought you Dota Cinema. <laughs> like, you, have to, you have to understand that there's a very large audience for Dota Cinema that does not watch remaining. competitive games at all. So mm -hmm. they knew who, they didn't Five know any of the players. There's still remaining. a ton. Like a majority of the viewers on Dota Cinema aren't watching this game right now. Resolve They're not on Reddit. Time. That's not the audience, you know? So I was trying yeah. to cater, but I catered too hard and... <laughs> It, uh, I would say it backfired, but hey, it's worked out quite nicely. I got to see my face on at the arena at TI, so whatever. Yeah. Yes, I was you there. It, it was fun. Shannon, you haven't seen it yet, but we have two of those TI6 Suns fan <laughs> fans right on, on our mantle. Right on the mantle, right there. In That's the a little room. creepy, actually. For all the, to see. There's yeah. something else on there, too. What, what's next to those things? I can't, I can't remember. remember. I think it might have been like a moon duck. I don't know. It's maybe the moon duck. The creepy part is where they pray to it every day. Before they go to <laughs> That's me, actually. It's hard to Bless explain me, when Suns strangers fan. come over. <laughs> that's our godfather, collectively. What do you guys think about Kunkka? I feel like that's a pretty good hero. I think he's support. okay. 
And, I mean, I don't know about in this game. I, I think he's like, a cool guy. I think in this game, I think he'd be good. He makes some awesome. Whoa! Party. Yo! Nice. Dude, I like this. Legion, Necro, you duel them, you sight them, you get dual damage, you get the extra timer. The synergy is insane. And you can get your Sadus regen, and you can heal people up with Legion, and it's great. And Yeah. Listen, I'm an Countered by Glimmer Cape. GG, <laughs> Necro. <laughs> Which. One item counter. I mean, do you ever feel like that's overstated, though? Like, when that item came out, everyone uh, tried to attribute that to the reason why Necro's never picked. Is that really the reason why Necro's I mean, never well, picked? Well, not anymore. I mean, when it I first mean, came out, it was It is a cool reason. counter, like, well, but it's not always the most practical, like... You're not always there with practical. your glimmer, glimmer cape the, on the uh, It's the same concept as Dazzle, who should be picked here by NP, by the way. I don't know why. Oh. Like, Necro could have been picked later, I feel okay. like. For, first came Glimmer Cape, and then what came after that? Hood of Defiance. Yes. That actually gave it a shell. So and then they're infused they're rain like drops as well. Yeah, infused raindrops. That's another great example. All of it. Yeah. It's it's like the somebody. What was that that Reddit shit post that was complaining about how a hero has been countered by so many items that came in recently? Visage. That's what it was. Oh yeah. And he like listed every single one of the items. You know, it's, that, like, it's a counter. You're welcome. Birds. Does does Ice Frog hate magic damage? <laughs> Find out. Yeah. Here. So Necro is just one of those oh, heroes that suffered it. from the plethora. Hey, oh. Of, oh. I like this game. This game's fun. Okay. Great hero against LC, though. Defensive hooks in duel. Very Absolutely. good. Yeah, for sure. A way to give LC a taste of her own medicine. Not not super great again against Scythe, but, you know. But I think... Well, it, he's got he's got magic armor, though. Yeah. It's, it's like good against it's, Venno. It's not worse. It's yeah, not, very tanky the because of the, the magic seconds. armor. Also, if he hooks Venno, you know, the little, little snake's not getting away so easily. Five seconds I mean, remaining. Snake. This is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm excited for a pledge, but... Kind of cool. It's a very hit or miss hero. I like these bands. Maybe the community nailed it with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with I'm you fan. on Kunkka, by the way, Mont. I, I would be down for a Kunkka yeah. for DC because yeah. I think it's a nice team fight hero that buffs up um, Necrophos really nicely with Kunkka's Rum. Right. Uh, I'll say Kunkka's Rum since Slax is probably somewhere listening. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I think they do need some additional catch, and I think Ten it also has good synergy remaining. with Legion. Uh, you, you said on, N on NP, right? Or no, on DC. No, 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 no on DC. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, I agree with it. But they go with the bang, bang Because bang you have there. a limited amount of, like, if you look at NP, they have a limited amount of damage. So it, I think Kunkka's Rum is also all really valuable whenever you see a team that has uh, is very set on being able to throw their nukes out and get a numbers advantage. If you can't actually finish off that hero, then I think you just sort of run out. Yeah. Um, and that's what DC are looking at, right? They're going to have really good sustained damage with Venomancer, Necrophos. Like, oh, sure. they, as long as they survive through the burst, I think they're good. But instead, they went Bounty. Um, Reserve time. Boo. I mean, Bounty, God, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I hate LC. I think LC is such a bad hero. Uh, I mean. It's not great. Yeah, kind of. I guess. <laughs> like how we both I mean, wanted to disagree, but couldn't find anything positive about <laughs> LC to say. <laughs> oh, okay, that's the thing about right picking then. like LC and Necro so early. You can get counters pretty easily, even if we, in elimination mode. I think, and these are two of, I would consider them somewhat counters. Pudge the save, Razor, just drains I mean, while LC duels somebody. Yep. I think also NP might be regretting that Rubik Ten first ban a little bit because that opened up for DC to take a very comfortable Beno. Rubik, one of the better heroes just in Five general to deal with Beno in the mid game. Sure, yeah. I mean, but now they get a comfort pick, the Envy Razor. Yeah, I mean, something they pick in CM. Yeah. So yeah. this is not so not so bad. They still need probably a safe lander for NP and then for DC. Uh, uh, what does DC really need here? <coughs> Where are they putting everybody? Yeah, what, how do you think they're going to run this Venno, Shannon? Is this uh, like jungling four? Is this a position one Arteezy style? Like, what are we looking at? Uh, I can remaining. guess that it's going to be a support. Five seconds remaining. Or we have mid. All right, well. I think um, Reserve time. the mid Venomancer might not be bad this game versus Razor. Because you've got, yeah, I think be. you've got decent reactions. I don't, I don't, I like. It's been a really long time since I think I've seen a matchup like that. But I think Gale allows it, so the Venomancer can't chase you down with too much static link, and you're more reliant on your wards to be able to get CS uh, at the later the lane goes. Anyway, so yeah, that's true. if you just want a hero that is able to get farm and draws relatively even against Razor, I think Venomancer would not be bad at it. Um, but then they still have this Legion Commander. Off lane, which I guess it can go straight Iron Talon jungle, because there really is not going to be a good roaming hero on NP. Ten like, they have Pudge, remaining. but Pudge is not a good jungle invader. He's just a good roamer on to mid. Um, Five seconds so, remaining. DC, for example, and Bounty Hunter, who is a really good uh, hero Radiant to invade jungle. Pick. 
I think MP are on the right track here with the Tinker Band. Like, if I were DC, I'd be tempted to support the Veno and then pick up, like, a Death Prophet or something. Some sort of really uh, tanky mid that can do a lot of damage. You know, kind of come online, help find kills with the LC. Tinker fits along that lineup for sure. Ten God, seconds they only have remaining. one second and two seconds of reserve time. Dyer Just noticed team. that. Yeah. Oh, the Abaddon! Nice. I'm a, I'm a fan. I was looking at the offlaners left, and I was like... I don't think there's really like because they obviously want another tanky team fighter. That's they're just going all in on like yeah. uh, we never die. Typical NP strat. So there's like so, there's a lot of sustained damage as well, just sustaining general from DC, and then of course you have MP. who are just like well, remaining. we have these big tanky people that are tough to bring down. So it what happened to Dazzle? To Necro too. What happened to this hero? I don't know, man. I feel like we don't see him nearly like as much. Him. Whoa! Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. against okay. the laser. So support Venom, I guess. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. So the only problem I have with this DC draft is it's pretty light on lockdown. You've got Duel, you've got Scythe. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah, not uh, a lot to work with there. I mean, you have slows. Yeah. You, have, you have good slows. But against the Stampede, it's going to be tough. That's a very good point, too. And the Aphotic Shield, really. Because mm -hmm. you could take off Gale, I believe, with uh, with the Aphotic Shield. So it's just like, what does it even do? Can can you? I believe you can. Gale's one of those weird ones that's kind of sticky. Can you not stuff. take off Gale? Like, I know if you Gale a Juggernaut and then he spins, it doesn't take it off, for example. But I don't know if Aphotic Shield is the same mechanic. Cap, can you save us? You know things. Uh, I think Aphotic Shield is a strong dispel. Oh, yeah. So you really might be know. right, but it's a strong know. one. I'm sorry I for know, doubting, doubting me, sir. Listen, uh, I mean, you got to trust me on these things. <laughs> it's that American we'll just have to wait to see it in-game. I have no clue. Also, listen, when we went to that, that car dealership, you were asking me questions. I had your back, man. You just got to trust me in a lot of this shit, okay? <laughs> listen, I knew Ben was fucked up right from the get-go. It's true. I brought you as my bullshit detector. And, man, I, you were smelling bullshit I when was, we pulled into the lot. Before we even pulled into the lot, I'm like, this is not a good – this isn't going to be good. This isn't going to be good. All right, we're going to have our game loading in. What are we thinking here, Suns fan? Confidence in DC here in game two. I mean, is it really proper for me to even predict? Yeah, who gives a shit? What, do you, what does it matter? Know. Just do your thing. You could predict. I want, I want Cap's to... opinion on this. I don't know what the. Uh, I think the right MP all the is. way. D DC, it's like they tried to draft against the the sustained lineup that everyone knew Team NP would go for in this game, but I don't think there are enough good heroes left in the pool. Right? If they if they have like they had a chance to be able to get um. What happened to? Um, I see him dying's blocked out, but he was banned. I don't see him banned. I think anywhere. he was first banned he was, last he was, game. He was banned last oh, game. Oh, okay. When the, when yeah, the like there, I think there's so many heroes that are out of the pool that are good against this strategy, and DC just couldn't get very many of them. Like Bounty Hunter does nothing against this strat. Like absolutely nothing. What are you gonna do? Scout out that they're running five man at your tower? Like <laughs> congratulations, I found you got you the information that I yeah that you. your tier three is about to be. You no, know, would have been better is a uh, Bloodseeker this game actually. Would've I think been really I think good. you were right about. I think we talked about the Kunkka cap. I think that would have been a much better choice, honestly. Well, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't know in particular, but I think that's I, I, I think you been. just you need like you had better late game. Uh, I think with Necrophos, I, I think you have better late game that way. So I think you, if you just like got as much team fight as humanly possible, then you had a chance yeah. to beat out NP. But I don't think Bounty Hunter does enough. Uh, I think Sniper was their best best possible hero, but Tinker obviously would have been a lot better because they just needed to go really good high ground defense and right. try and draw this game out to infinity. I think like we've seen this AUI Centaur do really well. You know, like he goes for this. Uh, AC and then ends in Abyssal build after the Vanguard, and it's pretty dirty. But I feel like Necro is the hero to deal with that disgusting tanky Centaur build. You know, you get him below 50% HP, and Necro can actually finish him off. Like, we've never seen Necro to try to counter this strat from NP before. But it comes back to that thing you were talking about. There's just a severe lack of lockdown coming out from that, that DC side. So they really mm -hmm. have to use the, the Necro to be kind of perfectly, or they have to. They might need to get well, some sort true. of more disabled <laughs> coming out. So. Digital Cucks. Yeah, what a, a great Battle the, Cup team, Yeah, I'm Shannon. a huge fan of the Battle Cup name for, for me, <laughs> Shannon. Digital Thank Cucks. Thank you. You guys are awesome. They are American now, that's for sure. <laughs> if there's any question about it, let it be settled. Officially. You should probably talk to, uh, who is missing? Misery? Razor. You should yep. probably talk to Misery about why why the hell is he playing with his team in the Battle Cup. Oh, yeah, we played with the, like they played with the manager, actually. Wait, was it Misery that wasn't on that? Yeah, maybe I, it was. I don't know. Somebody wasn't. Whoever wasn't, you should be talking yeah, to them about that's it. True. Yeah, dude, that's true. That can't be good for team morale. One player <laughs> dodging on the, the battle cup. Yeah. True dat. <laughs> I like Yeah, this line is pretty weird. These, 
the NP lineup like two months ago I would have said was weird. This is, I mean, it's still kind of weird, but it should be interesting. All right. Well, we'll see what they've got going on here. Once again, we've got the Mott and Mott Pack cast ready to rock and roll here for uh, game number two. Thanks, guys. We are going to jump right into here to game number two, of course. We, we talked at length, Trent, about the drafts and about DC maybe in lacking in terms of some lockdown, in terms of some team fight. And NP having an overall really solid draft. What do you think about the, the draft for these two squads? Yeah, I think uh, I think Cat made some pretty good points. Just the fact that, like, what's the bounty hunter going to do this game? It is definitely the group up, the tank, the beefiness. Uh, it kind of started that way with the Jakiro and the Centaur, and it never really deviated. So um, my favorite would probably have to head over to the side of NP simply because DC can win with this draft but it looks like it's super momentum based like tracks and duels and non-stop getting these off never really faltering and then maybe pressuring with the sustain that you have from a Necrophos but in terms of like ease of execution I think it's pretty well handed over to the side of NP and Honestly, that's just uh, pretty easy to favor in most matchups. I mean, yeah, you have return, you have the, the liquid fire to push down towers, your team fight is exceptionally better, you have a Photic Shield to take off a lot of the abilities that are going to be annoying to you, including track and venomous scale, so a Photic Shield is just going to be a very good situation for this game. Misery will scout an MSS hiding right here on this little alcove of trees. He'll walk out, can't find anything, has a sentry. Uh, it looks like we will see contention at the top rune spot, Envy's thinking about it, and looks like they might just back away on DC's side. Already kind of giving up a lot. Oh, and he got and it. get both of them. Abaddon runs in and gets the bottom bounce through. And Moon's going to chase after him with the overwhelming odds. But they do not have enough damage to bring down MSS. Especially what if he goes for a Photic Shield right now. Well, I got to say, I don't know if I've ever seen a solo safe lane Abaddon. Like, we've definitely had him in the uh, the old off lane for sure. Typically in like a dual lane scenario. But this is uh, something else. Because we got our support Pudge. We got our support Jakiro. And their aggro tri laning with the centaur will run a god love elimination. Oh, is he gonna see this courier? No, he will not. The courier is actually in the tree line, which was really cool. He's looking all around for it here. If he goes to the trees, that would be actually so sick. Oh, he oh! Got it. oh, misery! He, he gets there. He goes hunting. He might die for this, but damn, he gets the courier. I thought that yeah, was not gonna die. They I mean they put right in that little alcove. Wow. That buys his wind lace, suicides. Guys, see you later. Easy. That's already a great start. That's the kind of start DC needs with this bounty hunter, getting that courier kill. And of course, that means that Envy, for another two and a half or a minute and a half here, he's not going to have anything carried out. But, wow, uh, look at this too. The second he suicides, they put a sentry down here. Not only check rewards, but now they'll know if Misery rotates in, which he does. So if they had mana for the hook, and oh, nicely dropped by DC. And Misery will take down their sentry. Uh, I like the way they cut through this too. Just in case someone was going to get hooked, uh, they can immediately start running back in. It's not like just a death sentence. Yeah. A lot of mind games being played. Weeha taking a static link, only losing 8 damage, but at this point, 8 damage for a sniper is a, it's a fair bit when you're trying to CS up against a Razor. Get a couple more. Weeha's doing pretty well for himself, sending it currently 2 last hits, but not to, of course, the extent that Envy is at 5 last hits and 5 denies. Down bottom, a Phonic Shield of Rolling Odds. MSS, uh, he's winning this toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Curse of Avernus, the salve is coming out. With that, uh, MSS will back up and away and continue to farm. This is a very interesting matchup, you have, like you talked about, I believe, which is the, the Abaddon versus Legion Commander solo matchup, which is, you just don't see it very often. Yeah, I would think that as the levels start to stack up, Moon's going to have a pretty nice advantage here. There just won't be enough mana from MSS to like do anything useful with the Photic Shields, and then he can't just 1v1 with Curse of Avernus. It won't be enough once there's a... Uh, like, now there's just two points of Moment of Courage, and life gets so much harder for him. Oh, yeah. He's going to try to fight a Photic Shield. We'll actually do some damage when it breaks to Moon Meander. Moon actually taking some unfavorable trades here. And we'll back up. Moon is actually out of regen as well. The Abaddon, so too is he. So there's not much regen going on. Rotation came mid. Misery is in Viz. No sentries available. Um, walking around the tower, so he's not sp scouted out yet. But now he might have been seen by Envy. Looks like no, the, the pings didn't come out. But they know that Misery is, in fact, missing. And this is going to be Resolution and Sox are backing away. So Resolution is playing the safe lane. Necrophos, and it's a hero we don't see a lot of, but uh, what do you think about this? Uh, I think it's a hero that's maybe slightly underutilized in terms of competitive play. Soxa, uh, hook, he's dead to the rot. First blood comes out of UI 2000 getting it. Sox is just in a bad position. Wrapping around, Envy, now he might get caught. It's going to be the Shadow Walk. They have the Shrapnel as well. No Janata though, so not really able to slow him because Misery doesn't have an Orb of Venom either. So Envy just is going to bottle up and he's fine. Easy. Yep. Right. 
But uh, yeah, up against Centaur, uh, it's pretty obvious why you want to go in towards this next place. Half well, hook, which... resolution, in trouble, good Gale. Rezo still dead though, no more death pulse. He'll fall to the last auto attack or liquid fire proc of SVG's Jakiro. Everyone's so low and Misery rotates up, but it's too late. I think this is kind of what we expected. I mean, this aggro trilight is doing some serious work and they've just got more ways to set up these kills. Well. Uh, in terms of the pressure too, they have the Jakiro, so they'll start knocking down this tower. Can they even hold this? Like, having the Bounty Hunter is always going to put you in a, dis, uh, like a disadvantageous position when it comes to tri lanes too. So, like, you, the second you see a Bounty Hunter, you can just aggro trot, right? Because you know he's going to be weak if he is to stay, and you're also drawing him away from your other lanes. But in this game, the other lanes are awful for him anyway. Yeah. So, I just, I, I guess they're just fully valuing track this game. Uh oh, they SVG, will get they SVG. might get away a kill here. They need this resolution. Auto attack will do the job. He's the one that picks up the kill. SVG dies under the shadow of his own tier 1 tower, rotating it as AUI to thousand the tp came too late a kill is a kill it gets them back in the board here or at least on the board for the first time but there is a rotation coming in oh rose is smoked up looking for a hook on weha weha sitting pretty far to the right here closer to his tower still a hook could go from rose vision wise he's not scouting him just yet scan oh, nice comes scan. out beautifully done they know that someone is there and it is going to be the pie <laughs> he taunts he's like well that's that so 1437 will not be able to find anything they have a haste as well as the shadow walk up now for Misery, he doesn't head up to the high ground to look for Rose. He wanted to scout and just make sure that the Pudge wasn't there. He's making sure all these little spots are safe. Static Link gonna go. Janata, now available. Shrapnel, I, again, I just don't think they have the damage against Envy. It'll be tough. Another Shrapnel coming out. They will get the kill top lane. A UI 2000 bringing down a hero in the dive. But now, Envy getting help. Ice Cap coming in. Shrapnel, more damage. They need a couple more auto attacks. Oh, Weeha go is gonna get the kill, but he will fall. And now Misery might be next. Is SVG gonna bring down both of these heroes? Liquid Fire, not in time. So you do get the kill for the sniper. He does end up dying, but taking down Envy first is important as MSS dives the tower bottom, getting the kill on the Legion before getting killed himself. What a crazy game. Lots of blood freaking flying everywhere. Yeah, we got EXP trades and deaths going on, so DC take the advantage of the mid, just because it obviously goes over to their mid laner but now in that little 1v1 scenario. Mm -hmm. Interesting here. One thing about Moon joining this team too was a lot of people talked about how he was always that sacrificial three, more like that super active guy uh, who tends to maybe fall off in the mid game, right? Where he's more about fighting than overall the farming potential when you compare it to someone like more traditionally like Bulldog, for example, was kind of the epitome of a farming offlaner. But after that last game of the Clockwork, as Weehaw's now running into Rose, but uh, it's interesting to see him now on a pretty farm heavy hero in the Legion too. So definitely uh, branching out here you, you would say like the amount of farm that he was able to keep up on that clockwork was kind of insane so I'm expecting the same out of this legion well he is second in that word last hits right now he's tied with the bad and it's actually very close in this lane and you're right he does have a very wide hero pool which is always fun to watch for Moonmander, one of the the cool heroes and he's doing a pretty good job for now but again the start was not the greatest for DC however they're kind of coming back in a big way with a couple of these kills they've gotten they still need a lot of levels from Misery and this is to be expected for a hero like a bounty hunter you just cannot find that experience that you you're used to on other supports. Yeah, I think they're waiting for six on Weeha before they go for this. And they're going to oh, try actually, now. Oh, actually, it's going to go early. Janata, Weeha, not six again like you talked about. And that'll be it. Now top lane static link coming out. Resolution Ice Path. I believe he's dead even with Death Pulse. But guess what? He doesn't have mana. His wand charges, but he can't get him off in time. And he just falls to Envy as well as SVG. Diving that tier one tower, that's... Okay, again, another big kill coming the way of NP. Although Resolution is still top of the net worth, surprisingly enough. Well, he's farming well, but I mean, is it going to matter if they don't have any towers left and this pressure sets to roll from the side of the Radiant? Uh, NP like very happy with what just happened. Misery is not able to is farming at camp. Yeah, His Hood of Defiance is going to be so sick this game, too. Like, obviously, it doesn't help much against Reaper Scythe, but everything else in the game, it is very good up against. Oh, absolutely. They have the liquid fire going. This tier one tower is not dead yet. They rotated Envy out of that mid lane very early on. Maybe they didn't want to have that matchup with the sniper. I don't know. Oh, he's he's battling with this aquatic shield and raindrops. Oh, dude. yeah. This isn't good. Rose is coming in. Moon Meander. He's got that move speed from the overwhelming odds, but still will probably get hooked here. Uh, and just dies to the aquatic shield. Resolution Reapers. Does he have it? He could use Give it if it he him. wants to. Oh, he doesn't he just want wants to. to get the kill. I think he wants to use the Reapers on Rose. And now Rose is in trouble. He's going to try to buy and get his way out of here. The creep way will find him. There's the Reaper Scythe. And Resolution gets an easy double kill. What a start for him. And he's like, wow. you know what? I died top lane, but screw it. It's worth it for me.
Yep, now all those Seda stacks too, even at just level 1. Oh, I'll yeah. help him out there. Yeah. 10 regen going. Get up into a Veil, which is yes. going to be much needed this game with all the tank. But they do lose the top tower. They do, and they also lose Moonbander in that bottom lane. Misery's starting to get some more experience. They really could use some track here. If they get a track and followed up by like a Reaper Scythe or a couple of other kills. They have so many like abilities that just get you more than than you would otherwise. Like a, a Legion Commander Duel, a track, of course, the, the Reaper Scythe has talked about. So it's interesting. Meanwhile, AUI has Stampede. Moonbander was coming in with Misery. Looks like they're not going to try to get the kill. Misery, again, just leeching experience. Rotation. Smoke in the mid lane from Rose as well as Envy. They're going to check out the Ancient Stack and wrap around behind this tier 1 tower. This could be devastating. They do have no Poison Nova. Not even 6 yet. Resolution doesn't have the Reaper Scythe. Hook nice comes hook. out. Sox is going to get caught. Venom and Scale will go. Static Link is up. He'll fall. Teep is coming on mass, but it'll be too late as they've lost the Venom Answer. And that was brought up during the draft, too, about the lack of stuns, right? And, yeah, they have a lot of slows, but you pop Stampede, they don't matter. You just run away full speed, and you're out of there. Veil comes out onto Envy, but really not had anything being done. Weeha's pushing into that lane, mid lane, trying to get some extra golden experience for himself. Top lane, AUI still. He's got that hood of defiance, as we talked about. And Rose looking for a hook. Misery is in Viz. They oh, have the he, dust he up, and he is out, done. Dude. And there's going to be the ice path and the macro fire. And he'll fall, but maybe they can turn this around. They get off the borrowed time. Rose will certainly fall. They don't have the Reaper Scythe oh, yet. Shield? And he oh, will fall. Amazing. Moonmander, he wants this duel. He's going to find it. SVG caught. And the Reapers. Not only do you give the damage away, you're dead for an extra couple of seconds. And so Resolution finds yet another double kill here, Trent. Yeah, a little bit of a greedy dive, I guess. Goes, uh, and, and that's heavily punished when you're getting dual damage, too. It's not just the fact that you're trading away this gold and everything, but is that desperately needed momentum uh, for someone like Moomy under this game. The uh, be interesting to see his build. I don't know if you can just go for a blink this game. It kind of feels like he has to go Shadow Blade or something like that. Blade Mail, potentially? Really pump on the damage. Yeah, Blade Mail at some point, for sure. Yeah. We'll wait and see. Yeah, MSS is going to get caught. No borrowed time, but he does have the Aquatic Shield up and ready. 1,000 gold for him. He's third in the net worth, which... Not surprising considering the game he's had. And he's a little bit behind, but not by much. You do have the top of net worth resolution, as we've talked about numerous times. Now that he's a Dagon, he's picked up a Ring of Regen. What is this going to build into next here, Trent? Uh, I guess like four staff Hurricane Pike is in the worst game. Could just be his own Hood of Defiance. Um, quite a bit of magic damage on the side of NP. I mean, I suppose he could so go for So many options. I suppose he could go for a mech too if he wanted to. Yeah. TP out coming from NP to make sure they can get away. They are doing a nice job of working on the tier 2 tower toppling while this tier 1's being taken, as well as the tier 1 mid. But there's not much damage being done yet. Moonmander gonna come in. There is Rose nearby. 1437 has that. He'll get the ready. And Moonmander would be a great target to get. Hook would be perfect here, and he gets it. Nicely done. Into the stomp, into the double edge, into the dismember, and Rose finds himself a kill and a flesh heap stack. Well, when this is a big win for NP. Getting that kill top lane, pressuring in the mid towers. lane. Yeah, they're getting tower to tier one tower mid too. Yeah. They're starting to run over him. Misery oh, that's does a the big F6 turnaround yet. after that. It's only level feed. five. Borrowed time is up, so even if they went for an assassinate, well, he's going to use it anyways. And he pops it. All right, worth it. It's not that much mana, I guess. It's only a short cooldown. Yep. Uh, that's fine. Get rid of his ulti. Maybe not have to worry about it for a minute. Probably won't find a fight in that duration By anyway, way, though. It is going to be the four staff resolution, as you had corrected. Uh, I, I think it correctly. makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, up against a Razor, just like trying to create that gap, that distance. Jakiro too, saving allies who get stuck in uh, Ice Path. Yeah, you're... I, I think it, it's it's very good, this game. Against the Stomp, against the potential Hook, up against the Force, or the uh, the Static Link. You're absolutely right. I think this is a great choice in this game for them. Uh, speaking of Hurricane Pike, I think Weehaw will build one as well, as he already has the Ring of Regen. Uh, it's just a standard uh, Dragonlance build for a ranged agility here from the spine. The scary thing is, NP are just so tanky though that even if you create that gap, like if you're trying to use it in a defensive purpose where like you're getting run at and you're pushing them away from you, even a Hurricane Pike, let's say you get the double distance of the Force Staff, they're still so tanky. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know if they could stop them. If they stampede, like if they haven't stampeded already and you're trying to use this Hurricane Pike or Force Staff defensively, it's just not going to work. They I are mean, just going to run right through all your slows. Yeah, it's, we, they just won't have damage, really. Weeha's not doing nearly enough and he won't do nearly enough until he has a big item like sans dragon lance he needs more than that moon manor needs a lot more dual damage he needs a big item for himself there, there is so much tank on this team i mean every single hero is very tanky even the jakiro has a lot of uh, good strength gain too i mean 2.3 strength gain for a jakiro is definitely not bad there's gonna be the i think uh someone just bought that vanguard it was aui 2000 so he is even tankier against some of this yeah. damage it's ridiculous. especially against a sniper right yep. like yep. <laughs> it's nuts, uh, man. So much for getting peeped.
No, no peeps on AUI. I mean, yeah, he like, pretty much has pretty to get good. a low, and they have to use a Reaper as an assassin. I mean, they do have the ability to bring him down, but it takes a lot. And also, NP are getting some good vision in the enemy jungle. Some very good aggressive wards coming out. Misery is finally level 6, so track is up and ready to go, and boy, do they need it. Oh, Jakiro TPing out. Looks like he will barely make it away in time. The TP finishes. They see that it does, and they are out of luck. It's a really hard game for DC, it feels like. Yes. Um, it's kind of like they have similar drafts in the sense of like grouping up and pushing with like the Necrophos and general tankiness and stuff, but the, the one on the side of NP is just better, whereas like they're kind of handicapped by the bounty on the side of the Dire. Uh, at this point of the game, 14 minutes in, it does look like Moon will probably just save straight for the Blink since he is the only form of initiation. They but... found the hook, they find that it's number, they find the kill. Socks are having another bit of a rough start here. Uh... Oh, now Moon runs into Envy. But rolling odds could give him some move speed, but it looks like Envy's just going to try to link as much damage as he can. 105 damage with an Envy's rune on top of it. Weeha, I think you need to leave, buddy. <laughs> yeah, they have a Centaurus um, run too, but yep. yeah. Weeha trying to get out. Plasma Field, TP. Might be enough. Taking a lot of damage, but a good TP, a good call, and a good high ground movement. Yeah, I thought someone would TP in, but let's say, I mean, obviously we just probably would have started backing at that point, so. So there was a really good start for DC for the most part. They have the top net worth here in Resolution. There's a 1,500 net worth lead coming out for NP, which is not that significant at 14 minutes in. Experience-wise, it's a little bit more. Moon Meander, 19 years old. I think he might be going for this blink straight up. I think he is, but I think the second NP see the blink, they're just going to five man. Yes. And they're just going to just start pressuring into these tier twos. There's no reason uh, for them not to. Get tier one bottom. That. Yeah. And then it's just like, what are they going to do? Like, you'll blink duel. If it's not the Abaddon, he's going to Photic Shield the person and just help boost them up. Maybe throw a Miscoil. He might just get hooked back by the Pudge. And fighting into this five man, it's going to be really tough for DC. It kind of comes back to that Iza execution where they need that super well spaced out fight, you know? Gotta, gotta be working on like their smash skills here, keeping that perfect spacing space. between them and their opponents. Space, baby. Space. Yeah, so that's what it's all about. That's the game for DC. So, I don't know. MSS, I know he's a smash player, so. NP might have the edge there, too. He's all about, I mean, him and AUI, they are both great Smash players. They know all about well, space. Well, shit, DC lost them. Yeah, they like, made That's pretty loss. much it. They made <laughs> It's loss. over, guys. MSS, there's a big fight about the brew down here. They have the veil up on MSS. They want to be able to slow him down. They have the Janata. They're looking elsewhere. Ice cap. Force forward. There's the track. Stampede comes out as well with resolution. This is going to have to oh, that. Now the duel, they'll find the SVG Jakiro. He'll fall first. Can they get more? MSS is too damn fast. Even with a plague ward, they cannot chase him down. Rose has not been spotted. In the meantime, tier two tower is being taken. AUI 2000 chops it down. So does the Jakiro for a tier two tower. And realistically, probably more. The tier two tower mates also taking some hits. And now they're Plus, it's find also more. the blink reveal, which yep. is a very important part of that. Yep. So now this is where NP can change their game plan based on that. They're still a little bit spread out now. AUI 2000 is tracked up. Rose was still down bottom. Might walk into the plague ward. And he will. But, I mean, I don't think they care that much. They can go back and try to kill him, but it looks like they just want to get out. Instead, they're going to TP resolution home. He has picked up his ogre club. Let's see if he does finish up that hurricane pike. For now. I don't know, man. There's even a Midas up for a bad in here. This this game isn't that big of a lead for NP. It is certainly still still tough for them to win. But for DC, it just feels like they, they've they got to make some plays here. And I don't know what they can do. It, it's kind of like in the sense where NP had this idea last game where they had to fight around um, pressure coming in from DC. Where, like, if they could be set up at a tower while... The, the opponent felt forced into it. That's kind of where DC would love to shine right now. Like, if there actually was a five-man push, that well, maybe like a four-man push or a three-man push, somewhere where DC could get the numbers on them, that would be ideal for them. And it looks like right now they're hoping they're split around the map, but you can see the Blink Dagger's up and NP are grouping. They're just staying near each other. Envy won't be here, and maybe that'll be enough that they'll have an advantage, but he's got the bots too. Oh, boy. Hmm. Frightening. Here we go, though. Everybody coming in for DC side. AUI will be the first to get caught here. Duel is going to come out. They have the Reapers as well. They might need it to get this kill. It looks like the Mystic is going to come out. The Reapers oh, doesn't lit. bring him down. Are you kidding? It was sitting at maybe 100 HP. And now Misery is next. The hook came through. They brought the Legion down. You are right, Trip. They're too tanky. As Sox will be the third to fall here. They'll drop the Plague Ward, but MSS with the Curse of Avern is coming out. There's the dual breath. Soxa, even no poison open. So if he wanted to just use something before he died, he cannot. I cannot believe AUI so survived close. that. That is insane to me. 
Oh no. Disaster. Disaster indeed, my friend. Yep. Quick tower push down. Great grouping by NP. I mean, that was just well played. They knew they had to get aggressive from the side of DC. They knew that was going to be their play, so they just stay next to each other so they can help each other out. It was a little close, you know, for comfort, perhaps. The aphotic shield and the hook coming at the last possible second, but it got it done. And NP looking very solid so far. Looks like they, they've got a good read on what DC are up to. And now it's just up to them to clean out these tier 2s and probably head into Roche at some point. Although that'll be a very slow take, so they might need a, a serious fight win to head on in. Yeah. There's a lot of room to work with here. DC, in that fight, puts them in a very bad position. Sentry is up. Rose will see. Misery, he avoids the hook, but uh, the track is there. AUI 2000 is right around the corner. The stop, boom. Misery, you've gone too far, my friend. The dismember is there. Was not expecting the Centaur to help grab that kill. He just assumed, I believe, it was only going to be Rose on that pudge. And he dies for it, but no big deal. Misery, he's, uh, he's had some tough situations at Maddie Hunter, and they can certainly come back. Um, how do you feel about the late game situation for DC? I mean, if they can go late enough, do you think they can actually do enough damage to bring down some of these heroes, or is NP still fine when it comes? Uh, it's always tough to judge that based on a Legion Commander too, right? Because like sitting at 20 damage at 20 minutes, it's definitely not the worst set of the Legion Commanders. We see so many of them lately, actually. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it feels like Moon's not going to get too many dual wins. Perhaps if there's a lot of botched high ground attempts from the side of NP, then maybe they'll start to stack up and they can get it done. And then you can obviously Sniper's the high ground king. We all remember that patch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, he can do up there once he gets uh, some Mjolnirs, and now with the new Hurricane Pike being added into the mix. You know, when you think about that patch, too, it's kind of ridiculous. One lost team fight, you know, in that patch <laughs> that of the sniper, the and the patch, game dude. is just like it turns around completely. How, how long did the first version last? It was like three days or it something. It was only right? a couple of days. It was a handful of days. But even like later on, it wasn't it wasn't that great for teams with rubber. The original rubber band was something else, let me tell you. It was ridiculous. You all remember that was it. It's pretty clowny. And AUI2000 now is going to be your network leader. He eclipses that of the um, Resolution Necrophos. But here we go, though. And DC, pretty, pretty much you need to make this play. They have a double damage room. This is still not going very quickly. They have no real minus armor here. This is, uh, is going to take a while. It's luckily going at the task for the double damage room. But, you know, if, if MP know that something is up, they could maybe rotate and get this done. This was nicely played by them, though. Like, they pushed out the lanes to a really good degree. And NP are maybe a little bit greedy right now, uh, but they could be thinking there's a smoke play and not that they're rushing. Of course, judging by where SVG is, that is not the case, so I'm not sure what they think they're doing. Moonmander has picked himself up a Maelstrom, or at least the Maelstrom recipe. Oh, this is still they so painfully They must know they're slow. in the pit. They have to know this is happening. They're just not committing for it. They're not moving over. They're starting to sort of head in that direction now. And it seems to be that it's going to be too late. I'm, like, this is kind of crazy that DC will be able to take Rose, but grab the Aegis for Weeha and they get themselves in a bit of extra gold, which they desperately needed. They're down 7,500, so they needed that type of uh, advantage coming back their way. Yeah, I don't know. They weren't on the map forever. No, that, I mean, uh... like, yeah, they, they must have known, I think. Maybe, I'm not sure, but it just seemed like they weren't in really any position to, to run for it. Or, I, I'm not sure with their decision making there. Could be they just don't feel like it's a good enough spot to fight. Yeah, they, like, they, the risk. They, they could just say we could farm up. Them getting rush on is not the biggest thing in the world. That's probably what I, I would imagine they were thinking. Um, and they're it's absolutely a, it's right a good sign for DC, that's for sure. They'll, they'll be happy with that. They snag that up. And uh, they're actually smoking through their jungle, hoping that the side of DC are looking for a play on the Envy. But that is not the case. They're, in fact, up on the top. Resolution is going for a lot of early game items. And Atos next. Oh, nice ward. They're going to see Moon. Yeah, he's done. He's member. Stomp if need be, Ice Cap on top of it all. Another Flesh Heap stack going the way of the Pudge. He's 11 already. Rose Maelstrom Abaddon. Yeah, he, he picked it up a little while ago. That's pretty neat. This is like a pub build almost. I mean, it's not bad in, in professional in the professional scene. In fact, I like it. But see it a lot. Oh, oh the TP Weeha does get Hurricane Piked away. Oh, he didn't have the uh, dismember up. That was real close. I thought the Stomp was going to connect. They weren't quite in position for it. That's the danger with this lineup. You're even a little bit out of position here for DC. There's a lot of trouble that you're going to be in. They'll buy the gem for the Venomancer. DC. Oh, they can see Rezo top with no TP too. So they could theoretically he's, dive he's this if running. they see a good opportunity. He is running to that side shot now. He's bought the TP. Tier 2 tower is still alive, but I don't think you defend this. They do have the Legion Commander up, and he is TPing in. Let's see if they back up now. Looks like they have. They've decided to back up in a way as you have in the top lane. Rose is looking for potential hook. 
thinking that Resolution might stay a little bit longer. And Resolution smartly not pushing his luck here. We'll see if he gets greedy. Yeah, he'll show now. They can go for a hook. They have that, that Raiden Observer Ward. Yeah. Rose is like trying to inch his way over there without looking too obvious. And instead, he's going to be the one that gets turned on. However, Boots of Travel coming out. Resolution gets dismembered. There's the Macro Pyre, and that will get the kill, but Rezo may very well die for this. The Veil is up, ready to go. He's got another Death Pulse, but that's it. He does get his Atos for dying, but they give the kill away to Envy. And that's a Mega Kill Spree. That's a lot of gold that he just kind of gives away at that point. You can see why he went for it. Like, if he got all that off before the uh, dismember, then he could have just got the kill and gotten out before TPs would follow through. But fingers were a little bit too fast there for 1437, so Rezo will pay. Not worth, for sure. No, definitely not. Oops. Sorry about that. All right, well, there's the Shadow Blade coming out for Moonbeander. Blink and Shadow Blade is an interesting decision, but, I mean, he needs something. Yeah, I think it's just uh, more split push counter, right? Whereas uh, Shadow Blade just rising so much in prominence lately because of the reactions from Blink, and it can be tough to get the duel off at a, a situation like that. You can, like, press the attack, then Shadow Blade and walk in kind of situations too out of the tree line. Stampede used defensively. SVG is going to hightail it. Doesn't have a TP scroll. Weeha has his Hurricane Pike up in three seconds, and if he gets vision, they can get this kill. But there are heroes rotating in, including AUI. Force forward again. Weeha, oh, now he has no left to stop. Weeha has gone too far. He does have the Aegis, and he might still stay alive now, but here comes Envy. Press the attack coming out. He will finally fall. Everyone else is rotating. There's the Poison Nova. Only hits AUI at this point. Ice Path is up. Double edge is there. And it looks like they will grab this kill onto Weeha, who goes way too far. Not only that, but wow. GG is called. They know they're too far behind. They can't get anything done. Uh, that was a bit of an interesting time to call GG, but you feel them, right? I mean, this, this was too difficult for DC to get back into, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> they're done. They're out of there. Unfortunate. I don't know, yeah, Trent. That was, that was a, just a, a great, a, a great set of play from from NP and just a great draft. I mean, we talked about the draft from the get go. Kind of what we expected to have happen happened. Yeah, just it seemed like it was an easier game to execute for them. They saw the blink come out from uh, Moon. They just grouped up, won like two fights in a row, pushed some towers, and DC just did not see an end game there. And they're like, you know what? If this day goes the full length. Do we really want to drag out a game that's at such a low percent? You can kind of feel them, right? They might potentially play three best of threes today. So yep. I guess we can hurry up and get into the third game of our series here. Yeah, without, this is nice. Without further ado, we will jump into a break. We'll have our panel analyze the game as we come back. Game number three is right around the corner.